Well met, adventurers! In today's video, we're going to be going over three different physical puzzles that you can give for your players to solve. So, let's get into this. So yes, it is I, Nathaniel Gomezian, shopkeeper and proprietor of Gaming Treasure Chest. As I said, today's video, we're going to be going through three different physical puzzles that you can give to your players that they can physically hold and solve. And uh, it's a lot of fun to do that. Obviously, you'll find on my channel multiple different puzzle kind of things that you can give to your players, like uh, different situations and whatnot. And while that is all good and fun and puzzles, I always good and fun, uh, actually physical puzzles that your players can actually feel and touch and manipulate is a nice little thing that you can give to them every once in a while and it's just one of those things whereby you're actually giving them something which is like a from the world that they are playing in it's just that it, it bonds it gives you a bit more of a bonding physical experience with the world that they're with so that's why I've done this one today the puzzles from today's video are actually all things that I've 3d designed myself and you can actually download them for free links down below that you can do so you can actually 3d print these things for yourself they're not the best of files I will admit that I did um, rush some of these things to try and get this out for this video but I will go back to them and like try to improve on them but they're for free so you can just enjoy them and have some fun with them as I said so I said links for that down below but of course if you don't have a 3d printer you don't have to 3d print these things you can take these concepts and actually build them yourselves in various different ways be it through card foam whatever and you can recreate these puzzles as i said that you can give to your players it just gives them a little bit of like problem solving actually physically at the table and can be implemented in loads of different fun different ways like with all the puzzles on this channel you can choose how you want to implement them i will give you suggestions but obviously you don't have to take those suggestions you can just like a, take them and run them and go in a completely different direction and if you do i'd love to hear in the comment section down below but anyway let's get into the first puzzle so the first physical puzzle that I have that you can give your players to solve and have a bit of fun with is just very simply a puzzle. So it is this one that I have in front of me here that uh, I will be doing like a zooming shot so you can see what the hell's going on. So the one that I've got for you here is like a very generic one because I know that obviously a bunch of people uh, could potentially download this. So I wanted to make it as generic as possible while also kind of having the theme. So it's got like a circle with uh, like a, a D20 kind of outline going on there. But if you were designing this yourself, for your own players, there's like a, a bunch of different things that you can do with this. Uh, I would say to put some kind of pattern on it just because then it makes it so when your players are trying to put the puzzle pieces together like a, there are things which align so that they can then like a kind of work off of that so that they're just not going off of just blank pieces. One additional thing that I do like about this puzzle is that it does have like the little kind of like Lego-y kind of holes and the Lego-y kind of um, studs in there so there's only like so many ways that you can place bits into the puzzle. And even though it is just a simple puzzle there's so many different ways that you can utilize this kind of thing that you can give to your players. So on this one, obviously it's got that simple design, but for your one, like if you were making your own one, which I said, like you don't have to make it like this and 3D print it, you could just make it, I said, out of card, out of whatever. Uh, it could be maybe an insignia or a symbol for like a secret organization or like, a, like the big bad or whatever the hell you want to make it uh, relevant to in whatever plot point storyline that you want to, you can do. You could also just have it where you just have uh, writing that goes across it, whereby they have to put it together to, in order to get what the writing is so you could have it as maybe like actually writing like an actual riddle which then they have to then solve or it could be an actual map maybe a treasure map to lead to somewhere it could be maybe that this is a password whereby like I had to put this together in order to do that it could just simply be that this could be on a door and that they've got to put this together and then that's what opens the door so I said there's so many different ways that you could utilize just having a simple puzzle also the way that you give your players all the puzzle pieces can be different ways so obviously you could just have it where it just simply is they just get all the the puzzle pieces all together and that they've got to then put it together to solve whatever this is it could be maybe that they don't get all the puzzle pieces at once maybe as they're going through maybe defeating cultists or like a or like a people within this kind of shady organization whatever they find bits and pieces like a, off of the corpses of their flight which are like i say corpses technically you could take somebody and question them like a rummage through their pockets so they can find these things along the way that then like a, once they have all of them then they can start putting the puzzle together now i would say if you're going to do something like that um maybe somewhere in the codes or um like in their pockets or whatever it is that you're trying to do maybe explain how many pieces they there are so that your players know okay once we have this many pieces we can solve the puzzle if you're going to go along that route as i said you can just give them all the puzzle pieces and see how long it takes them to be able to put it together but as i said 
the method of how you decide to give these to your players is completely up to you. And as I said, like, there's different fun ways that you can utilize this kind of a puzzle. So if you do, I'd love to hear about it. But anyway, um, that's this puzzle. So let's head on to the next one. So this is the second puzzle that you can give to your players that's like a physical kind of puzzle. And uh, reminds you of a kind of a children's toy kind of thing with this one. It is essentially different cogs that have got like different colors, which you can say like a different colored crystals or gems or whatever you want to say these things are, which are interlaid within these cogs. And the idea basically is that they want to get it so that each of these cogs, like a, each thing which is kind of like touching the other cog almost, like a, is the same color. So this is the solution state of all the different cogs kind of matching up the colors as they go around. That's the general basis of the puzzle. And yet again, there are so many different ways that you can utilize this kind of thing. And as I said, this could just simply be that they place this on a door or that like there is on a door that they've then got to twist and then um, get to open it. But because these are in different like cog shapes, maybe this is some part of some great machine that some artificer has made. And like basically by putting them together, that's what makes the machine work or whatever there is there's definitely there's definitely several different ways that you can utilize this kind of idea of this puzzle so to, to simply open a door to activating some kind of weapon of great destruction who knows and the best part about this puzzle is yet again you can change it to however you want in terms of the fact that these things are removable which means that you don't just have to give your players this all at once yet again like with the previous puzzle which was like a puzzle you can they can find bits and pieces of this along the way maybe there's all these pieces are scattered in a dungeon and only when they get them together they take them back to the first bit that they can put them on and actually be able to um, solve the puzzle to open the door to get further on. I would say if you're gonna be doing something like that with the same with the other puzzle if it's something where they have to find something just explain that they find it when they get into a room which has got it in because if you do it down to an investigation or some kind of like perception check and they roll badly then if they physically need this to progress you've got to just give it to your players you know as they walk into the room it's enough of a puzzle that they've got to put this together and um, try and solve it by turning anyway because yet again if you take all of these pieces off they're not going to know which way they go on because basically there's only one way that if you put the things in a certain way that actually is going to work now yet again you can play with that for your players in terms of the fact that you can have it so that maybe there's like a diagrams in a book like maybe there's like i said like an adventurer has previously tried to do this or somebody who has set them on this quest has given them a journal or a diary or something like that and you can have it where you can show certain one of these things like maybe in a certain position not show the whole puzzle but maybe like, you know, like oh the middle one is in this position and like I show what colored gems around which way kind of thing so it gives them a jumping off point you could also have this that when they find this in whichever dungeon or wherever the hell that you've got this may you can actually glue some of these down so that they're actually placed and those are like a fixed positions so that your players like at least know like they've got something that they've got to be like okay right now we've got a match off of this as I said again putting something in there that allows them to know that it's because they have to get the colors matched up is something that you can do as well like in terms of like a through a riddle or just like a something written down in a book or something engraved on the wall or something around this whereby it says like you know, that uh, only when the matching colors touch will this activate or whatever it is so on this one that i've got in front of me as well there are like a, some of these have got like a what you call like black gems the black gems aren't actually part of the solution so it's kind of like a red herring so you could maybe put somewhere like you know in there that certain ones like you know don't actually function as part of the puzzle. Like, you know, like I said, yeah, again, just little clues and snippets that you can throw at your players along the way through their journey so that they were like, once they are trying to work this out, they've got like a, some headway of being able to do this. And as I said, you can do that through different things, journals, messages on walls, or whatever you decide to do in order to put in little clues and hints to your players. Just because I said, yeah, again, just adds to the fun of it and adds to the fun of the puzzles. And with this kind of puzzle, I just find it fun because it's fun watching your players like trying to like work out where these is going spinning these things around like little children trying to work out how to solve it so it's just a fun fun little puzzle as i said yet again the files for these are free down below if you wanted to get a hold of this one instead of just print it in different filaments in terms of like oh, like the gems and that and so you can print however many of them you want in different colors you can follow this pattern if you want to but you don't have to so the third and final puzzle that i have for you today is Probably one of the more fun ones to watch your players try and do is a full-on little maze that whereby basically a little ball bearing 
those in and basically your players like a, if you if you have four players if you have less than four players this can still be done it's just going to be more funny to watch them uh, do it but basically they hold on to these strings and by balancing it they basically put the um i'll try and do this a little it's very hard to do as one person but i will try to show you an example as we're talking uh, of basically trying to get this ball bearing to go around this maze and go into this little box thing in here which you could say it's got like a switch or something in there and it could be that it opens the door as, as i've said in previous puzzles it doesn't always have to be to open the door it can be to do whatever the hell you want that's just one of the more simple examples of explaining how this thing goes down but the way that I would describe this puzzle as being a room is that it would be in the centre of the room uh, in a kind of cabinet, like kind of like glass kind of cabinet with these strings which magically go through but magic can't penetrate into it so they can't just use a simple like a mage hand to move the ball around to get into the thing. Uh, as you can see there are holes underneath this so the ball bearing can fall out so it's kind of, oh, I'll probably put out a diagram or something like this so it would be kind of in a box whereby if the ball falls out there's like a little slot thing where the ball comes out and they can then pick that up and put it back into the top of this little um, kind of like altar thing that's in the middle and basically they can do this as many times until they finally manage to get the ball through onto that um your players might try and come up with like creative solutions if they do allow them to do so so maybe like they do try and use a mage hand that goes like kind of up and underneath and though the mage hand can't penetrate into the top of this it can maybe like put its mage hand over some of the holes to be able to help them so that like when the ball bearing goes through other holes it kind of like stays there and uh, they can continue onwards like okay, let them do that if they decide to i mean if they want to be creative with it that is fine and uh, can also add to the fun like of trying to have it so that like maybe if you've got four players like maybe like the dm will be the mage hand and just like you know, ask the player to explain where they want you to put your hand and like just have it under there um to help them out but so it's a fun little puzzle which can definitely create a lot of frustration because obviously like this whole thing has got to do with as they're holding the strings like a one person's got to be holding it one way like a slightly and going backwards and forwards and obviously one tilt slightly too much the one way could end up with the ball bearing going out of one of these holes but it's also a lot of fun as well i think that your players will really enjoy this or at least i know that i really enjoyed this the several times whereby uh, me and my wife gave this a go <laughs> Take this a go and whatnot and tried to get the ball out so as i said this is just a simple nice puzzle as i said it's this one is my least fun of the design ones like the rest of the designs are uh at least like a copable but this one like the way they kind of like glues together i will say is a bit haphazard because uh, it's just like four quadrants that you put together um but it is still usable and i will probably go back and improve on this design because i'm not 100 percent happy with it but at the moment it's functional and it's free so if you want to get it, there is that which link for it is down below and i said like uh, i'm sure that your players will have a lot of fun with it as i said it is intended for a party of four but it doesn't necessarily have to be a party of four you can do this with less people it just becomes a little bit more kind of the concentration levels that have to go into it get a little bit more insane but with all the other kind of puzzles and as i will probably say at the end of it you don't have to 3d print this you can do this with like foam or card or something as well so if you do decide to use this kind of puzzle i would love to hear how it goes for you because i said like uh, i'd love to hear how any any of the puzzles that i uh, put out here i'd love to hear how anyone uses them but anyway let's get back to other me so that's the three physical puzzles I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as I said, the links to all of them are down below so you can 3D print them yourself. And all the files are for free, so you can just download them for free and have fun with them. If you do, I'd love to hear how it goes. So please let me know down in the comment section down below as well if there's any other kind of improvements you'd like me to make. So as I said, I will admit that I did kind of rush some of these ones to get this video out so uh, the designs are not 100%, but they, will, they do function is what my point is. So, if you've got any suggestions and whatnot, I'd love to hear them down in the comment section down below. I want to make more kind of videos like this, like I'm giving you guys like physical puzzles that you can actually give to your players as well. There's obviously all the other puzzles. So if there's any ideas that you have for like themes that you want puzzles to be set around, please again, put that down in the comment section down below because I do read them and I will get to them and try to make puzzles that are themed around that so you guys can have fun and uh, good times. We all have fun together. That's the idea of this. And speaking of having fun together, if you want to, you can join the Discord server, which like I I said like it's very small at the moment but i'm hoping to make it into a lovely community where we can all just play dungeon dragons find games uh 
talk creatively about uh, different things that you want to implement or puzzles and such. And um, yeah, so please, link for that down below as well. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more things like it, then well, consider hitting that subscribe button, like a, uh, and do the YouTube-y things of liking and such. Like, I don't feel forced. These are the options that are given to you. I just thank all of you for watching in general, but if you want to support the channel even more and want to give gifts of D&D uh, &D themed things, then why not check out the Etsy store of Gaming Treasure Chest, where there are a bunch of D&D &D themed dice holders, dice rollers, all the different things, all designed by me, like the 3D um, puzzles that are in today's video. And uh, yeah, you can uh, get them if you want to support the channel that way. Do not feel forced. Those are your options. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And until next time, goodbye.